But before the before the vets will, you have to go to a vet. You can't go to co-op. You can't go to track to supply and buy these. You mm -hmm. have to go to a vet. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because they want to give your dog a test to see if they've got the heartworms first. To do that, you get fifty dollar visit for the vet, forty five dollar for the heartworm test. Okay. Then here it, uh, it's uh, sixty two dollars for three months. So to start with, this will cost you one hundred fifty seven dollars. Revolution is the heartworm treatment, or is that the heart? heart no, it's just like it's just like heartworm. It's another brand. It's another brand. They make it for cats too. Okay. This right here costs about forty dollars. This is injectable for cattle. Okay, it's the same exact thing. It's ivermectin. Ivermectin is ivermectin is ivermectin. I can take this banana and I can call it whatever I want to, but at the end of the day, it's still a banana. Okay, that's that's what this is. It's the same thing. You take the ivermectin, and we're going to talk about this. The cost then for this is a 50 ml bottle. And some people may not know, and I'm not trying to make anybody feel stupid or anything, but an ML and a CC is the same. Growing up as a kid, I didn't know that for a long, long time. You say something, three MLs, and you're like, well, this is syringe. It's got CCs on it. Same thing. Cubic centimeter is what a CC is, and one ML is exactly the same as a CC. So use those terms interchangeably. So that, this ends up being the cost is 80 cents per an ML. And an ML, um, when we when we divide it out the way we're going to talk about today, and we give it 12 months in a row for a 50 pound pound dog, it costs you 19 cents for a year's prevention. And actually, we we did some figures figuring, and it's no, it is 19 cents. It was 19.2. We thought it was a dollar 92, but it ends up being 19 cents. Literally 19 cents. Um, so why? Why? What's the shelf life on Information, people not knowing. Cool packaging. Packaging, convenience. Marketing. You don't have to fill out. Marketing. Marketing. I've got my vet growing up was one of the best men I ever know. Great friend of mine. Um, and he'll tell you, people will pay everybody before they pay their vet. If you got a cow that's down. You will go to what he used to go to the lake, get in a boat, drive on the other side of the lake to a guy's house and sit and just spend the afternoon drinking. Because that way, they couldn't find him. They'd find his vehicle. No matter where he was, they would find his vehicle. But by doing that, he could get away and get some peace. And so, the, but he would say that he does all of that, and yet he's the last to get paid. This is where they get paid. This is a big time markup and a big time fight. Then you pay for convenience. We're going to talk about uh, another type of warmer. How long? What's the shelf life on that product? Three years. Three. This is three years in the refrigerator. Three years is the shelf life on, on Alvin. Now, I don't know what I did, Will. So, let me see. Um, shelf life is a, is, a, is a good thing to bring up. Our our, uh, our government has a lot of things, especially um, with Katrina and everything. Uh, and all these things, our government has a lot of things stockpiled, mm -hmm. a lot of medicine stockpiled. Mm -hmm. And typically the, the date on most of those medicines were 10 years. And excuse me, so things were coming along and they're like, the stuff's fixing to start expiring. We need to do some looking. And they did a big study. Mm -hmm. And they found that 85 to 90 percent of the medicines were good 20 to 30 years as far as their efficacy. 20 to 30 years. My wife is the queen of, it's out of date, throw it away. I, I understand tetracycline is one of the antibiotics that you want to be very careful with. When it says it's expired, it's expired, you can do away with it. Everything else goes what, what, years. What? Tetracycline. Yes. And we're going to talk about some tetracycline, and that's one thing, I, that's a great thing to know, because there, there are going to be those things that are sensitive, and I, don't, I haven't looked at that, and we need to look at that uh, and see exactly what that is. Um, but I mean, I had, I had surgery on my tonsils in 92 or 93, something like that. Um, and I had it on a Friday, I was planning on going to work on Monday, and I was dying. My mom, I wasn't married then, and I'm a single man. My mom came down taking care of me, and I am dying. And I'm like, you've never had surgery before, you just don't understand, you know. I'm dying. And finally, and, and they gave me hydrocodone uh, liquid, and you know, 
I'm no druggie, but I'm, I'm hitting a little extra, you know. <laughs> and it's still, I'm dying. And Sunday afternoon, I went digging in my medicine cabinet. And I found some Vicodin from my sophomore year when I had my wisdom teeth cut out. Okay? I still have them. I don't take medicine much. Once I don't need it, I, I quit. And, but I keep it. And I took one of those. Even though I, it was hard to swallow, it wasn't liquid. Passed out and slept. And got some relief. Monday morning, I go into the doctor. Doc, man, something's going on. You know, and I gave him a little story. They looked at it. Who gets your tonsils taken out? Kids. Kids. Yes. Right? He kills adults. Kill kill but they, they, they he the prescription they wrote, he prescribed me like a 60 pound kid. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. And they specifically told me, don't take any Tylenol because it's got Tylenol in it and you'll overdose on that. Oh, it didn't have enough Tylenol in it to break my fever. Oh. <laughs> so I was dying. No wonder. But from 75 till about 95, that's 20 years I'd had those Vicodin. Believe me, it worked. <laughs> and I was proud to have it. That being said, um, my mother just this week, you know, had some mess and the doctor took me off it. You know what? I put it all in the bag. I brought it home. I'm going to yeah. keep it there and we'll go through. And we had, we had another uh, little lady that, for my trust, that passed away. And of course, you know, as you get older, you end up with bags of medicine. And going through and saying, okay, this is worthwhile keeping this room. And, and, and stockpiling those things so that. If you don't have anything else, That's right. you're proud to have it, believe me. And I was with that. So that, that. How do you dispose of uh, expired drugs? Expired medicines, that is, that is something that's really been big now because if you, they used to always say flush them down the toilet. Mm -hmm. Now it's a big thing because it's getting into our water right. supply. Right. And periodically, most municipalities will have a time when you can tow and drop it off. And most of your hospitals will do the same thing. Well, I think they have a. a I think uh, the pharmacy do the pharmacy do something? But they have a county roundup. Yeah, that's what they do in Robinson County. County. Yeah. Just send it yeah. to him. When I was working with him, the nurses would go in and have some flour in a medicine bottle, mm -hmm. and you put flour and then pour the liquid in the flour. Yeah. And then it would get buried in the ground you know, yeah. out of the thing. But that's one way. Or dirt or yeah. anything just to solidify the medication. You pour water in the like pills. Um, you get them wet, put them in a medicine bottle with a little bit of water, fill it up with flour or dirt or something. That would solidify it. Yeah. And then what do you do? You throw it away. So that, that has become a concern. Now, I said that that was $40. That was based on the information they had online. This actually is online right now, and it's 84 So it's going to be double that. Instead of 19 cents, it's going to cost you 38 cents. Yeah. Okay. And that's part of the treatment. Don't you need a script for pet meds, though? No. no for when you, a lot of your pet meds, when you go looking for them, it'll say a script. But a lot of them, if you, okay, number one, if you go into co-op, um, well, I know this particular thing right here, I was reading on it. And read what it says on there. I can see it. It's, you're supposed to have a um, pest control license for it. Uh, my brother has one, and most, most agricultural people do. Uh, in, in because the country for use by licensed pest control operators or commercial applicators only it means you took a four hour course is all, is all it means what is that this, this is Perithian and we're going to talk about it later but uh, you can walk in and just right off the shelf a co-op or a tractor supply or any of that feed stores anything like that um, and most of your, most of your meds like that if you you can go online a lot of them will say send in a prescription other ones you don't have to have I've never sent a prescription in for any of the stuff that I've ordered online. Okay. Okay, the Ivamac here, this is exactly what we see here. I meant to go buy you know, the package, package insert on this one is gone. But um, and I'm fixing to put this one away. It, it when you open it up, it's got the rubber stopper on the top of it. Okay? And you saw earlier when I when I did that, that was sealed inside that bag. Once you've used this, then we always took alcohol cleaning. We did in the hospital as well. Study that when I was actually in, in x-ray school in 82 or 83 said that when you take alcohol swab and clean the top of them, which we still do, they said basically all you're doing is stirring around the germs that are on top of them. They don't do a whole lot of care. <laughs> that's what they told us when we were in x-ray school that they had done a study and that's what it said. Alcohol. That's what we, we take an alcohol swab and clean the top. We always do. Always have. And I still do. So once you, once you use it, then you use alcohol swab to clean the top of it and then when you, when you withdraw your medicines. So this is 50 mLs. It's injectable. 
They make an ivermec that's a poron, and it kills just about all types of, uh, of worms. It can, will kill the heartworms, it'll kill grubs on cattle, it'll kill uh, the roundworms, the hookworms, and things like that. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to stress too is there is so much information out online about any of these things, and there's going to be some links here. Go and look when you get ready to do something. Now, can you find Joe, can you find Will over here? I did this and it told all my problems. You'll find it. I guarantee you'll find it. Don't just take one thing like that. Right. Get a consensus. And the stuff that I'm presenting here is things that I've gone, I've personally had experience with, or I've gone and got a consensus of what's out there. Because you will find some yahoo that swears up and down, he takes motor oil and puts it in his morning coffee, and it cured his cancer. <laughs> it will happen. So, um, Just for people that don't have, I don't have a medical background, so you'll, if you've never drawn a shot or anything, it's important to know that when you go to stick the needle in here, there is not a hole already there. Right. Don't go looking for something. Well, where do I stick this? It's rubber. You stick it through. You stick it in a different spot next time you draw and, it out. And typically also in there, uh, a thing is that the rubber plug goes in. There's a channel inside the stopper that's about like this. If you're having trouble getting it through, you kind of have, it's hard to explain. Um, Move the needle over towards the middle and don't get Correct. extra rubber. Yeah. Just, yeah, aim for the middle and that's your best point right there. Mm -hmm. the, the, the stopper kind of looks like that. So if you come over here and you're coming in the side over the edge, it'll be like this. Things that I've done for so long you don't think about, she brings that up. So you want to be right kind of in the center, okay? If it's a bottle that you're using repeatedly, uh, we buy uh, a lot of antibiotics like this growing up. We bought them in 250 mLs, and so you're using repeatedly. You kind of want to move around a little bit because you will actually get to a point where you'll actually eat up the rubber in that one spot. Most of y'all probably, you know, if you're not doing commercial cattle or something like that, it won't be an issue for you. But anyway, this is Ivermec, $84 online. You can walk into co-op, you can walk into tractor supply, and you can buy this right here. And that is part of the slow treatment. Do what? That is part of the slow treatment for heart problems because I've done that with my I just, I've, we're, we're going to talk about that too. We're going to talk about that too. To cure and treat heart problems. Yeah. Okay. But that's the monthly, what he's saying is, is this is the monthly yeah. preventative that you can use. This is monthly preventative. But he, heart guard. Yeah, but he, he, he also is treatment. correct in what he's talking about. Because yeah. what this kills, what this kills on the heartworms, it kill, it does not kill the adult heartworm. Okay, It does not kill the adult heartworm. It kills the, the baby in the middle stage. Okay, So if you give this to one that has heart uh, heartworms, it's going to prevent it from getting worse. Okay? It's going to prevent it from getting worse and kill some of that range. The older ones, they say, will die off from old age if you can keep, keep the animal going with all of that and just take care of them, give them good, good healthy diets and things like that, and they can live through that. This will get rid of the, the, um, the straight out mate will get rid of the, I can't tell you, it's fill out, basically the babies and the middle ones. The uh, fully adult ones will gradually die off, and, and what it's done is, as they're putting all those holes through there, what happens if you kill them all at one time, animal bleeds to death. Got all those holes in their heart just leaks. It's like you took a shotgun and shot it full of holes and expected it to work. It didn't work. So if they die off gradually, it can heal itself up. Mm -hmm. From the stuff I read, you got a, you got as good a chance as that as you do with the treatments, and it's not as hard, not near as hard on them. How long the did they live? <coughs> Excuse me? How long did the heart work? Yeah, that's what I was going to I don't know. I did not. Google it. Yeah, Google it. There you go. That's a good okay. If, if you were to use this treatment on a dog that had heartworms, how long would you do it? Would you do it once a week for no, no. 12 weeks? Or no, once you, do, a, you do the monthly. You do the you monthly treatment it, and you just, just do it from now on. Forever. Okay. You just do it from now on. It so prevents them from getting worse. I think I did it once yeah. a week. Because it'll kill them finally. I was doing the treatment, I think it's doing it once a week. Once a week? Yeah. And we're, we're going to talk about uh, the LD50, which is the lethal dose with Ivermectin. Because here's what you'll see. You'll see on the internet, and you'll see in these vet advertisements, Ivermectin could be lethal to your dog. Could be, don't use it. They've got a vested interest in you not using it this way. Right. Okay? They have a vested interest. 
And like I said, I'm not trying to put and your... Don't buy your pet drugs online, because all your dogs will die. Yeah, exactly. All your dogs will die. <laughs> Same yeah. drugs I'm selling you. It says heart guard, and it looks just like the one I got here, but it's got to be bad, because I got it online. <laughs> but, see, there, there are some breeds of dogs that right. have... Right here, this is very slight. Some dogs carry a gene, which is the MDR1 and the ABCB1, which makes the doses of ivermectin and other drugs that are safe for the general population dangerous to those individuals. A genetic defect allows that medicine to cross, spell that, <laughs> to cross the blood-brain barrier. Okay, the blood-brain barrier is something we deal with in, in humans and things like that when you get a bleed and things like that. But that being said, is these are breeds that were that are highly sensitive. Okay, does it mean every one of them will? No, but it has genetically been proven that it does. Washington State University does a test. If you're worried, you can do what? Washington State University does a test. Oh, do they? Yes. Okay. The other thing we look at this, we say English sheepdog. Well, mine. That's not mine. Well. Who was the visiting, who was the, the dog that was visiting, and do you really know who was the daddy of this dog, or, or do they were they half this, were they part this? That's right. So you don't know. That being said, there is a risk. There is a risk. These are the ones that are known. Yes, sir. What if they are part of those dogs? Then this ivermectin can cause them to have seizures and other things like that. Okay. But if they're already on heart guard, not yes, having sir. any problem, it's the same active. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, two more backups. Yeah. Backups. We got two backups, dogs. Yeah. Those are dogs. Yeah. 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 You already have more heart guard. You're good. We have some black labs for sale. They're not sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> we got two raw labs. Life cycle of heartworms are up to seven years. Up to seven years is the life cycle of a heartworm. Seven years. Seven years. That's crazy. Crazy. Okay, so remember we talked about this dosage earlier, okay? Now then, by taking this and dividing it out, the 68 micrograms, if the dog weighs 25 pounds, then they're getting 2.72 micrograms per pound. Does that make sense? That's based on the package insert here, okay? But if we're given... This dose right here, the, the next dose up of 136 micrograms, and that dog only weighs 26 pounds, then that dose to that dog is 5.23 micrograms per pound. That's a, that's a wide window. That's a wide window. I'm telling you that to say, be careful about what you're doing, but you've got a huge window. The other thing... We talked, uh, I mentioned a while ago, the LD50. LD50 means the lethal dose for 50%. What will it take to kill off 50% of the dogs that in this study? How much ivermectin will we have to give them to kill off 50% of them? 13,000 times. Basically, that, that vial right there, it would take three of those 50 ml vials, uh, full strength, to meet the lethal dose. To meet 50%. To meet the, the LD50. So, so the chance of bottles on the on the dog food. So the chances of, of overdosing them are very very rare. So that's what I say when you see it. I you know you could overdose you. You could. <laughs> it, it is a theoretical reality. Okay. Now we're going to do this, and then I got a warning here for you. I saw this on the website and I loved it. This procedure we're going to do is going to require math that you learned in fifth grade science class. Or fifth grade math, whatever. Science, because we're going to be mixing things. If you don't know the difference between a microgram and a milligram, or how to measure a milliliter, then you should have an adult help you. <laughs> or a sixth grader. Or a sixth grader. Because I may, I get my kids to go figure this out. I'm going to call you. Yes, I can't figure this out. Here, figure it out for me. Unfortunately, it's the reality of the world we live in. How simple is it? It really is. We take one ml of Ivamac, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to take a three ml syringe here. Okay, my glasses. It's terrible to be blind. Let me tell you. Okay, that is a three ml syringe. That's why you need the fifth grader to help you. Sir? That's why you need the fifth grader to help you. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay, blue one's there. 
This is my ivermectin here, and all this is is, is um, some colored water that I mixed up, mainly so that we can see it in the syringe, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to draw up. We've got our, our, our bottle, and we're going to draw up 1 ml. Okay? And let's see. Oh, no. I got too much. What do I do? It's real easy. You just squirt it back in the bottle, okay? Okay, so we got one ml of that, and this is going to be our a vial that we're going to use, okay? And, and typically you can you can use a small, um, she's got some small little uh, glass bottles that we use. Okay, the other thing is what we're going to mix it with is we're going to mix it with propylene glycol, or you can mix it with glycerin, okay? Now that's propylene glycol, not ethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol is antifreeze. That is not what it is. And I think the reason they use propylene glycol is you can find it much cheaper than you can the glycerin. You can buy the propylene glycol in the gallon in the gallon jug at, at uh, tractor supply. I mean at um, co-op for I think about twelve, thirteen, fourteen dollars. I've also mixed it with corn syrup because they love it, but it doesn't keep. Doesn't if, keep. Once you mix it, you have to use it. Yeah, but if you mix it, if you're just mixing it for just that time. She uses corn syrup they lick it right up. This uh, will not grow bacteria. That's the key key with it. So the glycerin, this is going to be our glycerin. Well, our glycerin, we don't, number one, we don't need a needle anymore. So we get rid of our, glitter, our, our needle and we draw up three cc's and we squirt that in there. We draw up three more cc's and we squirt that in there. And we draw up three more cc's and we squirt that in there. 9 mLs to 1 mL. We've now reduced the concentration of that by 10%. Okay? We've reduced it by 10%. Now, what we do is we take a, um, this is a tuberculin syringe. We call them a TV syringe. You say, this is going to be so hard. This is going to be so hard to dose that small amount. Each one of those lines there is a tenth of a cc. Okay? Tenth of a cc. So we haven't got to the math, but but basically for for our dog, how many? Sig, sig, yeah. is, six, sig is sixty-seven pounds. I think it was point three. Yeah. Is is what it would be. Three tenths. So all you do is do that. <coughs> See that? That's a must, monthly dose of heart guard. Squirt that on the food. Squirt it inside a weenie, inside a piece of bread, boom. So if your dog is 60, 67, it should be slightly more than two milliliters, right? right. I mean, yeah. right. And we've already determined that oh, yeah, we can't. Yeah. So it would be 0.27 or right. maybe even 0.3 if you right. wanted to. Do. And we're, we're going we're to look at the math closer here. But the other thing is that window. Five, you got 2.72 right. to 5.23. To me... To me, what I what I do, I tend to lean towards the higher dose. We know that the 5.23 is a safe dose because they're selling it at that. The safe dose is probably 10. Truth be known, okay. But so, shooting for the five, four to five is the range to be in, I think, okay. So, that's how it, how easy it is. You just put that in the food. Now, how do we get that? Each ml, okay. We need to understand the difference between micrograms and, and milligrams, okay? Each ml contains 10 milligrams, okay? That's 1,000 of a gram, 1,000th of a gram, okay? A microgram is 1,000th of a milligram. If you get the two confused, you're way off, way off, okay? In this, in this drug, what we're, what we're dealing with, when we look at the package insert of HeartGuard, it's in micrograms. MCG. So the dose is micrograms. Our dosage are in micrograms. So we start with 10 ml, 10 milligrams in one vial. Okay? We take a cc of that, we reduce it 10 to 1. So now we have 1 milligram in 1 ml. Okay? What we put in here, we have 1 milligram per ml. That's a thousand micrograms. Okay? Using the TV syringe, each tenth of an ml is 100 micrograms. So each one of the lines on here, each one of those tenths, is 100 micrograms. 
So you figure out what your dose should be, and you dose it accordingly. Once you've got this, it's one line for every 100 micrograms. So you remember we talked about that 50-pound that dog, 523 micrograms. Pull it up. Mm -hmm. five, five, uh, five lines, okay? Um, here I said figure a dose of four, mi four micrograms per pound. That's being on that high end, okay? That'd be two. Let's, let's go to, how, how do we go to this, Will? That's a four micrograms per pound. Of the time, Bob, that you know what? Four micrograms per pound. Of the time, Bob, that be 200 micrograms? 200, yes. For, for a 50 pound dog, it would be 200 micrograms. It was two mLs on that wall ago. It makes sense what he said a while ago. We said it was 0.2 mLs a while ago for a 50 pound dog. That's figuring that four micrograms per pound times 50 pounds gives you 200 micrograms. And so it's 2.2 mLs there. Looking at where we are and what I've got, we're, we're, I'm really running out of time. I'm going to be moving forward and, and uh, trying to get through with, with this. Um, and so we're going to be kind of going a little bit faster uh, over a lot of things. The, this website is one that a, a guy did about fixing the Ivamac, and he really, he really hammers our vets and really, uh, you know, says it's just a big scam and everything. Um, I think our vets are very important, but this is one of their money makers, okay? Um, make it a point to administer preventive dose on the first of our month so you don't forget. That's one of the worst things. My wife's got everything in her phone and beep, and, you know, uh, we forget things. Okay, uh, just like I was telling her earlier, I never gave heart, heartworm treatment to any animal before until I had that dog that died. Okay, it's just something I tend to be cows. I put them out; they're gonna have to hustle and get it. My bees, I don't feed bees. They got they're gonna have to hustle and get it. I lose bees. Uh, some people are in their hives once a week and they're feeding their bees and doing all that. If, I'm kind of the same way about that as I am a welfare system. If I keep, if I'm feeding them every month, they're gonna get used to that and they can't make it on their own. So. That tends to be where, where I'm at. Um, I don't want to kill my dog. I don't want to give him this. We see that everywhere, okay? Like I said, the lethal dose is 80 milligrams per kilogram. So you'd have to give three bottles of the Ivermec to kill your dog. Okay. We're going to move on to um, another type of warmer. And one of the things growing up, uh, that, that we always did, we, we didn't use the same. You go in co-op or somewhere, you'll see all these different kinds of warmer and, and they use different chemicals. Uh, parasites get immune to certain things. We never use the same warmer. You'd use one and the next time you use a different one, the next time you use a different one. And they, a lot of them, you read the labels, they hit the same things. This, um, however you say it, thing is, yeah, that one. It, it, hit, it does a lot of the same worms, but also it's something that, that uh, enables you to do it. I, I typically do, try to do this like once a quarter. Come back on top of the other and do it once a quarter. Um, you can buy the K9D warmer or you can buy, and this one here is, is for horses, and you can buy this one here that's for cattle. And this one's fancy, but you got to have a it's caulking tube, and you, there's a very special caulking gun that goes with it, which I have because we have show steers and we deal with that. So I buy this because I use it for the cattle. It's the exact same medicine as it is for the dog. Identical same medicine. No different. Okay? So that's if you have to treat worms. Treat what? The actual treatment for worms that they have worms already? Yes, yes. It, it's the it's same thing. And the same with the medic. It both treats. The one thing to note is on the canine, um, the specific one here, the smaller one, it is a different concentration. When you look at you're still giving the same dosage, but you need to read and see what the concentration is. And this one typically is, uh, this is, it'll say right on this, this is 100 milli milligrams. Now remember before we were talking about micrograms, this one's milligrams per gram, okay? And I didn't bring it today. We've got a little scale. You can go to Harbor Freight. they got the little tiny scales. They'll think you're dealing drugs. You buy one of those little scales. They're about five bucks at Harbor Freight. What you do is you put your plastic spoon on, on the scale, and you do tear, T-A-R-E, mm -hmm. and, and basically it zeroes it out yeah. with a spoon on there that makes that zero. Mm -hmm. And I literally just sit here and take my, my finger and push on the end of here. I figure it up at 100 
uh, milligrams per ml. How many milligrams do I need based on, on, on the dosage? Figure it out. Okay, that's going to be about this many grams, and I push it out and get close to it. With a spoon, and I take, take it, take it off the spoon. And usually, I turn around and put it on the back side of the spoon, and I take, and, take it and put it in the dog's mouth and just wipe it like that. The thing about the, this is it's a three-day it's a three-day treatment. You you do it three days back to back, okay? And two, if if, you, if the dogs haven't been treated, you don't you don't want to have them out running in the house after you give them this treatment. They will go to the bathroom, and you will find all kinds of critters in their poop. Okay, it works well. Um, the the only the difference for the, this one and the horse one, nothing. Size, convenience. The horse one's smaller. You can. Dial it and do it, and uh, and it's in a in a bigger syringe there. I mean, in a smaller syringe right here, so you can just do it straight out. That'd be a little easier to put it on the spoon or something. Um, but look at cost, okay? Well, number one, this is also this this. You know, many uh, people that have been around may have heard it before. Panicure, panicure. Uh, a lot of, that's what most of the vets the vets get in gallon jugs, and then they pour it in a little bitty round bottle and sell it to you for you know whatever price. Uh, for dogs or cats, 22.7 milligrams per pound. That's the takeaway that you need to take. Okay? If there's 100 milligrams per gram, do the math and figure out my dog weighs this much and that's how much it is. But you think about it. It adds up real quick. A 100 pound dog, or even a 50 pound dog, it, it, it adds up really quick. That big tube there cost me $46.99 at a uh, at co-op, that's 290 grams times 100 grams, or 2,900 milligrams. That's 1.6 cents per 100 milligrams. Okay, you can buy the horse one. It's smaller, a little more convenient. It raises it to 32 cents. So you're paying 16 times the price. It's a little more convenient, and it's not that big. Of, I mean, it's 7.95 for that one, but you figure. This is only 250 grams. Somebody do the math, math right quick. At 22.7 for a 50 pound dog, what is that? 110, 110 times three, you have three days in a row. 330, okay? So how many, how many doses do you get out of here? You know, you, you can get several doses out of that, okay? If you buy the dogs, the little nice one that you just give them a little, it had, it's 222 milligrams per gram. That's why I was telling you, it has a different concentration, but it comes in a prepackaged little treat and you give it to them. There's three treats in there because it's three days, and for 660 milligrams, it's $1.42 per milligram, I mean, per 100 milligrams. So you see the cost difference between them. It's a matter of convenience and cost. It's up to you. You know, what, what you're, you know, it, yeah, it doesn't really matter, I'll just do this, it's easier. Or, if you've got, especially if you've got other animals, if you've got you know, a bunch of dogs running around the, the farm and everything, or you've got a new set of puppies, it adds up real quick. You know, eight, you take eight puppies and figure three days in a row, adds up real quick. But like I said, this is the same, uh, I bought this tube actually for my steers. And it's also the same warmer for, for, for horses. It's important to note on that too, that the, when you look at the dosage on that for steers and horses, it's considerably less per pound yes. for horses and steers than it is for dogs. So you look at that initially and go, oh, that can't be right. Something's not right. I, I talked I talk to my, my friend's wife's a vet. I called, you know, I didn't call her. We were over at their house. And I said, what is the deal? This is like 10 times the dose. Am, am I off? Is something? She goes, no. She goes, it is. It's 10 times the dose or something. It's much greater for dogs. She said anesthesia is the same way, you know, per pound for, for a dog versus a, a, a cow. So she said, yeah, it's surprisingly different. So if you get to looking at that and going, well, that, that can't be right. That don't make sense. That is true. Just, you know, and I have checked that with a vet. And so it's the same stuff. And um, the other thing is, th this it just was one that my wife picked up because she thought our horse needed to be warmed, and I would already picked up the other stuff. And this is ivermectin. See? It's different. They've got shoulder number. And, but this is a nice little cute thing for horses. All you got to do is get out there and Google the dose for horses, and the same stuff we got, bigger... Mil you know, micrograms is micrograms, in fact. Look on there, Will. Send me a microgram. I can't throw my glass of tea. Throw that bottle of water. Yeah. 
figure out how many how many uh, micrograms that is. All you do is look at the micrograms, and it's in a it may be in a paste or something like that to make it convenient. You, you put it in there, and, and and it's the same. So it's the same drug. Okay, there is no they haven't changed the drug. It, it is still the same. Okay, so this is using Safeguard. Okay, this is a very popular one that you see just about everywhere. Uh, any of the feed stores and things like that that have it. Injections. One of the things um, uh, with, with injections, like we did with a dog earlier, you can do them subcutaneous, which is under skin, or you can do them IM, or you can do them IV. Uh, for most people, giving something IV, unless you've had some experience, you don't need to be messing with it. Okay? Uh, kind of as a general rule. The thing you understand about needles, I've got these laid out here in order. The smaller the number of the needle, the gauge of the needle, the smaller the number, the bigger it is. You're like, I'm going to give you a shot with a 22. No. Or do you want one with 16? Well, give me the 16. It's much smaller. No. Oh, no. Which one of them do you want a shot with? 16 hurts. Yeah, that's a 16. Okay? In the hospital, we use 16 for giving blood. And that's about the only time we ever use a 16. We use that for, for giving blood so we can get blood in. Uh, it's like a pipeline. Um, we use, um, I, I did CT for many years. We use... Um, an 18 many times because we're using a pressure injector and we have to get a, a high volume in. Mo most of the time outside of that, 21 or 22 for, for an IV. And we're, we're, these are all IV. For an IM, you want a 21, a 22, or something like that. Um, so there's just some different ones laid out here. The other thing to understand is these are both 18s. They're different lengths. Okay? They're made for different things. You, go, you know, if you're giving a subcutaneous shot or if you're giving an intramuscular shot to, shot to go deeper. Um, the same needles that work for cows work for people. Believe me, if your brother's got the syringe in his hand and the calf jumps, it goes in you just the same as it does the calf. And I'm here to tell you, black leg medicine will not kill you. <laughs> you know that for a fact. I know that for a fact. Several times over. Um, so... Um, the, the, other, the other thing to remember, these are just some assortments that we have. When, when you go to co-op, you can buy them with, it, with the needle, or you can buy the needle separate. This costs 25 cents a piece. These cost 20 cents. <laughs> what? <laughs> these cost 20 cents. The syringe with the needle attached. So, and the green, they're, they're color coded. Green is 18 gauge. Okay? And so typically for drawing up solutions, you're, uh, the other thing, um, John mentioned this the other day. It's dependent on how deep you're going, what you're giving, and the viscosity of the medicine you're giving. Your combiotics, your penicillins, it's a high... You, know, have you ever had a, one of the penicillin shots in your butt? Oh, Hurts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's thick. It's like syrup. Yeah. Okay? You want a bigger diameter needle or you'll be there, like, and especially with animals. Okay, you're like, well, I want to be, you know... I keep coming back to my poor wife because this is what she is. She wants to take care of the poor thing and we're going to use a little one. Well, what good does it do to use a little needle because it hurts them less and they jump because it's taking longer and you had to stick them three times. Use the bigger needle, get it done, and get it over with. And so you got to balance that out, okay? So they are color coded. <coughs> what number is on that one right there? 22? Yep. That's what I thought. The blues are 22. So this one comes with a pre attached 22 gauge needle. And this one is a red. I believe this is a. Um, 18 gauge. What does that one say? <laughs> that's not going to be 18. What did you say? 18. The red one? It, that's not right. That's a 25. That's I knew that. Because the, the, 18, the 18s are green. These are on this part now. Or that, that may be for hospitals. But, so this is a 25. A 25 is a very small, it's a very small syringe. Okay? So most of your little needles, like the one that we used earlier to give him a shot, was a, was a um, I believe it was a 25. Okay? So, uh, so the tractor supply will have all those. Tractor supply has them all. Co-op has them. Co-op. When you go to the the desk along the wall that goes out to the feed, just to the right of that has all that. Which this, has better prices, co-op or tractor supply? Yeah, Twenty-two to twenty-five cents. Does it matter? Yeah. No, it, it, well, it's I mean, but if you're getting multiple stuff, it, it depends on the stuff. It, it, it's tractor supply typically is a little bit higher, and tractor supply will have a pack of five needles. You can't buy one. It's in a pack of five. So producers has a, a more variety. Too. Yeah, it has more variety. To me, producers, 
And to me, tractor supply, I grew up with tractor supply, was a parts counter in Waco, Texas. That's all it was, was a parts counter. Now it's a fancy store. It's more of a city folks kind of thing. Uh, Co-op is where farmers actually go. Uh, go, to your, go to your feed stores. Most of your feed stores have, have a good, you may have to ask, but they've got this stuff somewhere. Okay? Not all of them, but some of them do. Um, so the other thing, and we're we'll, going we'll to talk about it a little bit in the middle, uh, in a minute, the, the larger syringes, what they work great for is irrigating, cleaning. Mm -hmm. Like this right here, cleaning up some. Uh, having sterile water works great, but for most of our animals, just tap water, clean tap water, and spraying out a wound, cleaning it out. Okay, suck it up and use it to spray it out. Uh, it's, that's really really important to clean them out. So any of this stuff will work on people. Okay, you stockpile it, you have it for your animals. Um, like Melissa said earlier, any of these metal needles, you put them in a in a in a pan on top of the fire. Uh, if that's all we got is a fire and you boil it and it's fine to go, okay? All right, talking about the types of injections. Intramuscular, we're going into the muscle. Intravenous, we're going into the vein, like I said, for, for, for animals and stuff. Really, truly, intravenous, unless you're, you're going to do a bed, you're going to give them dextrose, things like that, or you're going to be giving them something to put them to sleep. Uh, one of the bets I use from Snook out there, is she can walk up, hold a twitch on a horse with one hand, pull a needle out, and one hand, and check it, and one hand hit that with a horse jumping around, hit it, put them down. I mean, it's 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 amazing. You get used to it. Uh, sub Q. You see how the skin's just pulled up like that? That's what that's what you that's what that's for. And just simply because I happen to have it, and this one talks about it, an intramammary mammary infusion. This little cow cows get mastitis really bad, and if you hadn't. If you hadn't seen a pissed off cow, go try it. The only way to get it better is to, you've got to milk it out. You've got to milk it out regular. Because what happens is, there, is that the tip will swell up and the calf can't get to it to suck on it. So calf starts drinking on the other three and that one just gets engorged and worse and worse and worse. Best thing they ever made right there. You slide that up into the, into the tip and it just sits there and, and the milk just runs out. Best thing in the world. Because when you go doing this, she, woo, you've got to fight on your hands. And we always had lots of barn cats around, and they loved it because then you start doing this, and uh, every day you, you put a cow, from then on, every time you put a cow in a lot, then they're, here they come running up there. But anyway, so you can also put medicine in there. Uh, uh, most of the times we never did that. We actually just gave them combine or something like, like that. And uh, many times, if you, some cows just have a bad quad. Uh, a bag has four has four tits, and so one of them sometimes is just bag and that, uh, bad, and that tit's always going to swell up and always going to be too big every time they have a calf. And you know up front that we're going to put this one in the lot, we're going to milk it down because if it sits there, it will get mastitis, and, and then you got problems. So this is just another picture showing the same thing, whether you're going in the muscle or you're going um, subcutaneous or intradermal. For the most part, for animals, we don't really do much intradermal. The other thing is, before you inject, pull back. If you're in an area that, that, that like especially doing I am, uh, intermuscular, pull back to make sure you, that you don't. If you get, if you pull back and you get a, blood, a bunch of blood, hello, stop. We'll get you some more medicine and put it somewhere else and give it. Okay. Now then, this shows like what we did earlier with the dog. Pull the skin up, go like that. That ain't the way you're supposed to do it, okay? Oops. Pay attention. You will do that. You will go through and go into your finger on the other side, okay? So pull it up, angle it. It's very easy to do. These are the areas for to, to do sub-Q on a dog. Areas on a cow. Areas on a horse. On a horse, be very careful. That's one of the things. Make sure you draw back. Very vascular through the neck. On a cat, they've said now, don't give them in the body of the cat. Um, as you can tell, I'm not much of a cat person. They say if you give them in the body of the cat, they can develop a cancer around it, and they can't excise it if it's in the body. So if they do it down there, they can excise it. If my cat gets cancer, they ain't going to worry about that. So, <laughs> so they want you to do it in their feet or their ankles, kind of? In, the, in their legs, oh. because I guess they figure they can amputate the leg and they'll be fine. 
Okay. The other thing is in the tail. Okay. Like I said, this is stuff I had to go looking for because, you know. Okay. You can't. The thing is, when you give injections, you need to look for reactions. Severe reactions are rare. Uh, if it happens, it will happen within 20, 30 minutes. Uh, vomiting, diarrhea, lameness, collapse, and seizure. Okay. Fleas and ticks. Peripheral, 10%. 